I'm sure at this point, if you've been watching my channel for the last year and a half or so, you know that I've been playing a lot of Run and Bun. If you don't know, I recently beat Run and Bun after 327 attempts of the game since March of 2023. And we're gonna have a big video coming out at the end of September, which is essentially my winning run put into more of a cinematic video. But I wanted to take the time now to rank every single available encounter in the game. With 300 plus attempts, I feel like I've used most of these. There's definitely going to be some Pokemon I haven't used before, but I wanted to make a tier list. I have an early game encounters tier list from over a year ago now, I think, and I do think it's a little bit outdated. So I wanted to go through having beaten the game and rank every encounter and just give my honest thoughts on them after so many attempts. Rather than starting, because I think this is alphabetical by the looks of it, but rather than starting with Obama Snow, I want to rank all the starters just right off the bat. It's no surprise that they're all going to be S tier. All three starters are fantastic. There's like a lot of discourse in the community over which starter is the best. I don't really think there's a right answer. I think all three starters do a lot. Um, I think with Torterra and Empoleon, there are more complex routes and strategies you can use with them as opposed to Infernape, who's more like, I guess, bare bones, like fake out overheat, fake out CC, all that stuff. But with that said, I, I do think that they're all just as good as one another. I am going to put Torterra ahead though, because, you know, my goat. But I think from there, just start going alphabetical. It's important to understand a Pokemon's value with how useful they are throughout the entire game, right? So for example, Dreadnought is really, really useful in the early game specifically, like early to mid game. He's so good. Definitely falls off quite a bit, but I think because of his value in the early game, it really matters because I think a lot of runs die in early game and having Pokemon that help you get out of early game is pretty huge, but I won't go ahead and rank him yet. I also think before I get into anything, I want to just rank both Urshifus as S tier as well. I think I'll probably very loosely order them in tiers, but when it comes to S tier, pretty much everything will be not ordered because I don't, I don't really think it matters a ton. I've hardly ever seen anybody with this Pokemon, but there is one thing he fulfills, which is pretty unique, and that's getting access to Soundproof, which not a lot of mods get. This thing is also one of the better encounters, Cycling Road Rivals Swampert. I think it just always beats it. I, I don't run Infernape, so I've never really done it, but I'm pretty sure it just kind of relatively risklessly beats that, that thing with its typing. I really don't have a lot of experience using this, but I, I know what it's really capable of in the early game, at least, and I think Soundproof is a... Um, really cool ability. With that said, though, it's not... I don't think it's bad. Uh, I think C is pretty comfortable for Obama Snow. Asphalt is definitely good. I think putting it anywhere other than A tier is wrong, although I wouldn't put it S tier. Uh, Excelgore is not great. I have used this Pokemon, actually. He's not super common, but Final Gambit really helps. Um, you're faster than pretty much everything other than in Swift Swim. Other than that, he doesn't really do a ton. I want to put him in D tier, but I, I honestly don't know if I would put him at like the bottom of C. I also might add a tier because I don't know. I feel like there is some absolute <laughs> bums in this game, but uh, I think I'll keep him D for now. And yeah, I'll add, a, I'll add a tier below this. Never really used this guy though, sadly, but I, I've seen him quite a bit. Uh, I think putting him anywhere other than A is pretty unfair. He's a really good mod. He's definitely not S, but he's, he's really solid. I mean, it's Aerodactyl, you can't really go wrong, you know? Agron is another Pokemon that is really solid. It has a really good Mega, and you get it immediately after beating Flannery, which is awesome. Definitely an A-tier Mon. Like I said, I, I'm not really ordering these. Uh, maybe I'll do some, like, loose ordering, but I think he definitely belongs at least in A-tier. Alakazam is one of those Pokemon that's like, okay, so you can get Abra on Route, what, 102 or 103 or whatever it is. If it's, like, sassy or something, it's probably, like, complete trash. <laughs> like, you're probably not using it. But you can also get Synchro synchronize timid or something and then it's like okay this thing is insane right i don't know if i want to put it a tier though i think a cr like overall alakazam has been kind of power crept throughout the years obviously a gen 1 pokemon like he it, he has a hard time switching in but he does a lot of damage so i think i'm gonna put him b altaria is one of my personal favorite pokemon to use in the entire game specifically mega altaria a lot of megas we're ranking there's like four right here and then this would get one if it didn't have snow warning but mega altaria another mega the cool thing about this mega is obviously it's a fairy dragon dragon type rather than dragon flying. And because it's dragon flying before it mega evolves, you can very easily bait dragon type moves and then mega evolve into an immunity, which is really, really useful. Specifically, the best instance of this that just immediately comes to mind is Lily Cove Rival leads with that Garchomp that is really, really hard to handle. Honestly, there's not a lot of stuff that straight up beats it safely because it's Stealth Rocks and all that stuff. But one of my all-time favorite Pokemon to use, I, I, it is 100% A tier. Very, very good. It's come to the Elite Four as well. I think it was, hmm, was Taken brought it? I think. Don't, 
uh, quote me on that, but I think that's who brought it. I also thought about bringing it to my Elite Four. It's really good on Drake. Really, really good Pokemon. Really fun to use. Now, Ambipom is one of the Pokemon I haven't used. I've never used this, but Technician, yeah, it gets U-Turn, Fling, Fake Out, Tail Slap, Acrobatics. Like, this thing is probably okay. I I, I do still want to rank it because it, I, I think I want to save the not used here for Pokemon. Like, there's a really good example for this. Relicanth, it just does not get used. Like, or like, I think Wailord is another good example of this. Like this Pokemon doesn't get used. So I think, I think I want to put it C tier, but probably towards the lower end. I think at some point, just making this tier list makes me want to do a run of run and bun where I pick my encounters, but like, I'm not going out of my way to pick broken ones. I pick stuff that doesn't often get used. And I think Ambipom would be a perfect candidate to the, uh, for that. Obviously this opinion could change if I use it and I'm like, okay, this thing is horrible or like this thing's better than that. But I think C tier is fair. Amoongus is one of those Pokemon that is way better in real Pokemon than it is in run and bun like obviously it's a vgc staple it's not that good though but it's like okay it serves a purpose and i think because of that i'll put it in c tier also an, an unfortunate part about pokemon like parasect and amoongus is they get effect spore which almost never works in your favor it seems like unless you're wacko but you know Ampharos, on the other hand, is pretty exciting. I think Ampharos is really solid. For example, my Mega Ampharos in my winning run, I believe it one-shot all three of the Salamence, Ludicolo, and Blaziken with a Thunder. Granted, mine was plus special attack, but this Pokemon's really powerful. It's like 165 base special attack, electric dragon type. I think I want to put it A tier, and I honestly think people will probably disagree with that, but it's, it's really good. I would probably put it on the lower end of A tier, but it's I think it's a really good Pokemon. Its typing is really interesting. Uh, Araquanid is a super underrated Pokemon, in my opinion. I feel like part of what makes Araquanid kind of annoying to get is because I feel like half the time when you get Araquanid, you get it on 118 when you want Beedrill. So a lot of people are kind of unhappy when they get it, right? But I think it's actually really good. It's the bulkiest of the sticky web users. Uh, Water Bubble is a really good ability and it makes it hit like a truck, especially in rain. I, I really can't justify putting it in C, so I think I'm gonna definitely go B, probably towards like the middle of B, but Arbok is not great but I will say one thing about Arbok is it's one of, granted you need a candy, but it's one of the few Pokemon that could reasonably 1v1 Brawly's Hitmontop, which definitely gives it some value. The value and the trade-off of this thing just isn't great. I think D tier is very, very fair. I wouldn't personally put it in, well, maybe I would because you're using a candy. I'm going to put it D. Obviously, everybody knows how good Hisui Arcanine is. If you aren't familiar and you, you don't know uh, a ton about Run and Bun, essentially, if you get a Growlithe and there are a couple spots to get a Growlithe, you can trade it or an Arcanine for either Hamilton or Alaska, depending on which one you trade, aka Hasui Arcanine. The trade's in Rustboro, so you get it pretty early. This is, without a doubt, one of the best Pokemon in the game, but uh, it's just a easy S tier. Now, Kanto Arcanine, on the other hand, is one that doesn't get used a lot because of Hisui Arcanine, but I know it's good. I know people have gone out of their way to use it. Just like a, I think it's like a really solid, good statted Mon that um, contributes. And because of that, I think I'm just gonna put it B tier. If you've used Kanto Arcanine more, and I'm wrong, feel free to leave a comment. But this seems fair. I think I would put it here. But I, I've talked to um, some other runners and they've said it's pretty good. Okay, Archeops is interesting. I think this one is super IV dependent. But with that said, the most common place to get Archeops is from Mirage Towers Fossil. I do think it kind of falls off though, and I don't think it's as good as Aerodactyl. Part of that being because Aerodactyl gets a Mega. I'm worried that if I put it A, I'll have too many mods in A, but I'm gonna put it top of B for now. That could change. Armaldo, on the other hand, another fossil, is a Pokemon that I've only ever had Armaldo late game. So you can get Armaldo underwater. It's like Armaldo, Cradley, Amistar, Copytops, and Delmize, I think, are part of those encounter tables. And Armaldo is one of the more common ones. I think I'm going to put him top of C. If anybody's used Armaldo from the fossil and can tell me how he is from Flannery Split onward towards like late game and he's and he's not bad, just let me know. But I think C tier is fair. I would probably put him on the upper middle end of C tier. Audino is such a weird Pokemon because it is one of the most dynamic. Well, I don't think dynamic's the word. I would say volatile, but it's not a good Pokemon. I almost want to put it F tier. It's like it doesn't ever leave the box. <laughs> I'm 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 pretty sure it's got to be the first F tier of the of the the tier list like it's it's not good aurorus on the other hand i think is pretty cool awful typing when it comes to like competitive pokemon and stuff like that it's definitely a solid mon like i've used it and it's been great one of my furthest attempts had an aurorus and it was really really popping off i think i want to put it b tier close to archaeops but probably a little bit below avalug and avalug hisui okay so right off the bat avalug hisui is definitely the worst of the two really really solid on norman it is one of the best diggersby answers 
and we all know how insane that Pokemon is. I'm leaking this here. I was talking to Peach Allen DMs about his E4, and he was talking about bringing this, but he didn't. Gulp. I, I, I think Avalug is pretty good. I'm an Avalug believer. I would put it towards the bottom of B tier. I think it's a really solid Pokemon. Its defense is, I mean, it's so min-maxed, right? Like, it's it's defense, physical attack. That's it. That's all you get. But that's good. Hisui, on the other hand, is really bad, and I've not used it a lot. But when I did use it, I was like, man, I wish I had the regular one. Um, I think I'm going to put it in F tier. It's pretty horrible. There's not a ton to say about Azumarill, but uh, Water Fairy is just a great typing, and it, it does what Azumarill does, but worse. Uh, and you don't get Encore. Barrascuta, on the other hand, is so good. I think flip turn with a Pokemon with Barrascuta speed is B tier alone, right? That, like, just that makes it B tier. But there's a lot more. You get Poison Jab, which is pretty good coverage. You get Close Combat, which is amazing coverage. It almost turns it into, like, a water fighting type with great speed. Definitely at least A tier, but I could honestly see the argument for putting it low S tier. Some of the hardest sections of the game, Barrascuta is really, really good for. Basque Legion, on, a, on the other hand, is another Pokemon you really want to route for on the Surf Sim. I, I would definitely put it in A tier, honestly. It gets good coverage moves, too. Psychic Fangs is great. Obviously, Ghost Types can switch out of Magma Storm and Shadow Tag and all that stuff. Oh, but now, this is one that people are going to probably disagree with, but Bastiodon is incredibly good. I I'm definitely putting it A tier, like right, right here. It it's a really, really good Pokemon. Beedrill on its own doesn't do a lot. Sniper and Swarm as its two abilities, which neither of which do a ton. It's an early bug type Pokemon, so y you kind of know what you're getting with that, right? Other than that, it doesn't really do anything on Brawly. Like, it's a fighting pivot, because at times Force is fighting, but its defense is really bad. But obviously, where Beedrill shines is once you beat Flannery and you get its Mega Evolution, it becomes an absolute monster. Adaptability with 150 attack, 145 speed. It's no surprise that Beedrill is one of the best mons in the game. It makes Winona pretty much free. It makes Tate and Liza pretty much free. Mega Beedrill, it is 100% without a doubt S tier. It's just so, so, so good. Like I said, I'm not really ordering S tier, but um, it's just one of the most broken Pokemon in the entire game. Okay, Beware. Beware is really good. This, this guy is like really, really solid. Fluffy is a really good ability and he's the only Pokemon that gets a, a solid A tier mon. I would put it probably right, right, like right here. Okay, Blastoise is a really interesting one for me because I think in early run and bun, people were talking about like, oh yeah, like get, go to Safari Zone and get Blastoise because like you want Mega Blastoise. And I was like, okay, sure. And I got it and it just doesn't, it, it didn't do a lot for me. Like granted in my winning run, my Blastoise was terrible and it still did some stuff. It's definitely not bad. It's not a bad Pokemon, but I think it was like really overrated towards like early into this game's lifespan. I'd probably put it like high B tier, but you get, you get stuff like, I feel like a lot of the value in Blastoise, you're either using a scale or a TM. Quick little story time. My original furthest run, I think it was 271 wiped to one of the optional trainers on route 123 i think it was the box was heavily bleeding but lazykin was one of the pokemon i had in the box and i i had planned a little bit of my elite four and he was part of the team with that said i don't think he's great <laughs> i don't think he's a great mon it's not a bad pokemon though like i would definitely very comfortably put it in b tier boltend is expensive is the thing obviously it's really good on brawly but you need a candy and a scale for it to be really good which is expensive uh you can scale psychic fangs and evolve it at level 22. With that said, it kind of frees up Brawly, which is nice. It's also a good lead on Cycling Road Rival, because it can just kill the NDD with Crunch. Other than that, I don't really think it does a lot. I feel like Bolton runs never get off the ground for me, which is ironic because it's like supposedly so good for early game. I think every time I have a Bolton, I wipe to Roxanne, <laughs> but I, I, it's just like, okay, I think. I would probably put it like here. It's It, it does what it does really well. Breloom, I love Breloom. Um, Breloom, Unfortunately, it has a 50-50 ability split. It's either Effect Spore or Poison Heal, and Poison Heal is much better. Personally, if I was a Chimchar runner, I would not be a fan of getting this Pokemon because I think it would almost never come out of the box. Other than that, it's like decent. I would probably put it... You also get Worry Seed, which I think is a really useful ability. I just don't think I can put it B. See, it's... these aren't bad Pokemon. They're just not as good as B tier, obviously. I quite like Bruxish. In-game, not... <laughs> not really. Physical Psychic type Pokemon are actually pretty useful at times. With that said, it's not like amazing or anything. I would also probably put it in C tier, but I, I think it's like a pretty solid mon. It definitely fills a role. I think a lot of the C tier mons are niche, but good at their niche. Speaking of Pokemon that do that, Camerupt, but I think within the context of the game, Camerupt is definitely better than that. Big shout outs to Kindle again for bringing this to the Elite Four, but uh, Mega Camerupt does really well on Glacia because Glacia has a Trick Room team. It also gets Explosion, so that's pretty good. Explosion's actually very useful, but uh, I think I'm going to put it B tier, like right around here. It's Carnivine, dude. Oh my. Here's the thing about Carnivine, okay? Carnivine is a big meme. 
He's obviously not a great Pokemon. He's definitely not bad. Carnivine is one of the earlier Leaf Storm Pokemon that you get. And Leaf Storm is pretty useful in, in the desert, which can be pretty tricky sometimes. I wouldn't say he's this level of bad. I would definitely put him in D tier. Tortuga is a really solid Mon as well for Brawly Split. I definitely cannot put it S tier as a protect bot, but it's it's like definitely one of the better protect bots. So I'm going to put it A. But protect is really important. It is a very, very, very valuable thing to have. Scented Scorch is also really good in my opinion, or maybe not really good, but he's he's definitely solid. Like it's a really, really early evolution with Scented Scorch or Sizzlipede. Yeah, Sizzlipede. It's like 25, which is really nice. There's not like a ton to say about it. It's it's reasonably bulky with its like special bulk. White Smoke's a decent ability as well. Burn Up is a scale, which is nice. It, it does a pretty good attack, 115 solid. Yeah, 100 HP, 90 special defense. Like it's, it's a bulky mon. And I think because of that, it's decent. Uh, I'm gonna put it B tier. There's not a ton to say about it because it doesn't have a ton of utility outside of like its raw damage output. Chandelure is pretty solid. It does a lot of damage with overheat, which is huge. I think I've seen people one shot Maxi's Groudon with this thing which is pretty wild to think about. It's like a pretty well statted Pokemon with like, it's like not slow, it's not fast. It's a ghost type, obviously. It hits really, really hard. Overheat's a really, really useful move to have in run and bun. I think I'm gonna put it like A tier for sure. Year around, I, I think it's comparable to Beware. But I, I mean, I, I didn't even really know you could get Charizard now that I think about it. I guess you can get every starter. I don't know what to say about this thing. I mean, it's probably fine, right? You get Blaze, you're like decently fast. I haven't really used this. So I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm just gonna put it B. I think that's reasonable because like there's no way it's like you you kind of know what you're getting right with Charizard. If anybody's used Charizard, um, or if anybody's used any Pokemon that I talk about, I'm not entirely sure on. Definitely leave a comment because there's a lot of Pokemon in this game. Chestnut, on the other hand, I know for certain is really really good. It's been champed. It's come to the Elite Four. Fighting Grass is actually an interestingly sneaky good typing in games like this. But most importantly, it gets Spiky Shield, which is such a good move. I think it's a definitely like a lock at A tier. I'd probably put him around here. A really good Pokemon. I would love to get to use it more. Cinderace, I, I legitimately have no idea. I don't even know where you get this. The only time I've ever seen anybody use this was in one of like the draft races that the community put together. I'm gonna put this in not use because I, I genuinely have no idea. I, I don't think you get Liber- yeah, you get Blaze. You get U-Turn as a scale. Acrobatics, Pyro Ball, High Jump Kick, Flare Blitz. I, I, don't, I don't think I could see this being any higher than like B really. I mean, maybe low A, I, I don't know. I'm not gonna rank it. I honestly have no idea. If anybody's used it again, let me know. Clawwitzer, this is one of hands down my favorite Pokemon to use in the game. It's so much fun. Dexa actually buffed this thing. Uh, I forget what the exact buff was. I think before you needed to, maybe you needed, to, I think you needed to scale like the coverage moves it gets, like Dark Pulse, Dragon Pulse, for like all of early and mid game. It's it hits pretty hard, but it falls off a cliff in the late game. It is so hard to find uses for it. Cause not cause it's bad, but generally cause you have a better, like a, a better answer generally. And you get flip turn, which is good, but I like having the coverage. I would put it like probably like here. It's like pretty good. I, I would say B tier. It's really, really nice for early game and mid game. Claydol, I think is sneaky good too. I really, really like using Claydol. Obviously you're a little bit bummed when you get it because the place you're getting it is the place you can get Excadrill, who in a lot of ways is this thing but better as like a, a lot of what you're using Claydol for is rapid spin, right? But Excadrill kind of does that better, but it definitely serves a purpose. I would probably put it low B tier. Uh, I think Claydol is pretty good. It's also such a cool Pokemon. I think its design is really interesting, but I think Clefable for a long time was pretty unexplored. Most recently with probably the coolest Elite Four team ever, Buy One Mill brought Clefable and did Drake doubles. I think there's a lot you can do with Clefable, but with that said, it kind of does that one thing. Clefable does one thing, but I think we can do it a lot more. I don't know. It's it's hard for me to justify putting it above B. I would probably put it like around here. It's I, I don't have a ton of experience with it. Maybe Buy One Mill can lead me a Stray. Cloyster, I think, is pretty good. Probably all another B tier Mon. It's good for Norman. One of the better counters to his Diggers B. I mean, Cloyster is pretty min max too. It's like really bulky. Well, I guess it's not min max. It's just kind of maxed out defense, right? It's really bulky on the defensive side of things. I wouldn't put it super high in B tier. Like, I'd probably put it, I'd probably put it below. Yeah, right here. I think it's fair. He's like solid. It does exactly what you think it's going to do. Okay, Conkelder. 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 If this thing is guts, it is amazing. If it's sheer force, it's good. It, I think that averages out to A tier. I would probably put it probably like here. Okay, okay, my man Ja. I'm a Ja believer, okay? Now, with that said, Qfant, dookie butthole, bad. Definitely not good. I've had a really good cop Raja that put in work. With that said, I don't think I can put it higher than C tier because it's still a cop Raja. But like I said, these Pokemon, not bad, really solid free my man jaw. Now Corviknight is really solid. It depends, in my opinion, when you get it. I got a Corviknight late game that didn't do a ton, but it still has such a good defensive typing. With that said, it's still a really, really good Pokemon. I would probably put it here. 
probably here actually. Yeah, it's actually really good. You get Roost, Defog, like Iron Head, Brave Bird, Dual Wing Beat, Body Press, stuff like that. It's really good. It's it's like a really good utility Pokemon and it walls a lot of stuff. That typing is really, really good. I mean, we all know how good Skarmory can be. Cradle is not good. One of the worst fossils, I think, in my opinion. Something it does get that's pretty interesting is Miracle, which not a lot of Pokemon get. Its typing's not great. Rock has what, two resistances? Or sorry, not Rock. Uh, rock Grass has, I think, two resistances. It's Electric and Normal, unless I'm forgetting anything which is bad. I'd put him D, probably. He's not good. If you get Cradley as your fossil, that's pretty unfortunate. But it's not like it does nothing. It's just not great. Crawdon is, much like Caracosta, a really, really good protect bot. With that said, though, it is one of the better answers for Shell's Galar Slowbro. Uh, and it can also be pretty good on Roxanne with the candy. I think A tier is... If I'm putting Caracosta A tier, I think this is fair as well. No, I'm gonna put it high B. I think this is fair. Because, like, I think protect has such high value because not a lot of Pokemon get it. Crob okay, I am a huge, huge, huge fan of Crobat and Run and Bun. It's not much different from Crobat in other games, but it's a really, really good Pokemon. I'm tempted to put it A. I think it's a really good Pokemon. The thing that is discouraging me to put it A is it's it can be IV dependent, because if its speed is bad, it's bad. So I'm gonna put it B, but I think it's really good. I have never seen anybody use this. It doesn't get used. It is almost undoubtedly worse than the Alolan variant though, which is an Elite Four champion. Shoutouts to Moxie. I actually don't really know how good it is though. Hisui? Yeah, Hisui Decidueye is, I've never seen anybody use it. I don't imagine it's good. It's slow. I don't know. I, I would imagine it's not great. I know Moxie got quite a bit of use out of this, including the E4, like I said. It's a ghost type, which is nice. It's a grass type, which is nice. I, I haven't used it personally. I, I think Moxie thought it was pretty good. Probably put it around uh, here. I I it seems reasonable. A ghost and a grass type seems pretty good. Crustle. I think Crustle is decent. He's like very decent. Uh, my favorite thing that Crustle does is on the Archie fight in Seafloor Cavern, you can sack into sturdy Crustle Rock Wrecker that Zapdos, which is hilarious. It's just like pretty bulky. Knockoff's a really nice thing to have. Rock Tomb's pretty useful. I would put it like, it's either like high C or low B, I think. And I think I would do, I think I'd do high C for now. I think that's fair. I know what the YouTube comments are gonna say. Big shout out to the Grintool for champing this thing. Doesn't mean it's good. With that said, it does get fake out in Encore. So I think because of that, it just is D tier. Everybody's like, oh, but it makes the early game so free. But like those, the, the trainers that Delcaddy makes free are already free. I'll put it here. Uh, it's just not good. <laughs> Del Fox, on the other hand, I think is pretty good. It's just like a pretty solid Mon. Uh, it's not great on the physical side of things, but it's decently well min-maxed with like pretty solid spadef speed and special attack. I, I quite like Delphox. I used it once and I thought it was good. I'm going to put it right here. Um, I thought it was really, really solid when I used it. Delmize is super interesting. Does like pretty good damage. Its typing is pretty cool. It's pretty decent. Embargo is something that I saw Moxie use a lot with this thing. With that said, I don't think it's like that good. Like it's, it's definitely solid. I would probably put it like here. It's like a, I think a solid B tier mon. It's pretty cool. Triple stab is interesting. I, just, I think it's more of a utility guy. Diggersby is not good, but it is pretty good early game. It's pretty good on Brawly. He, he, I, I really have a hard time seeing what Diggersby does outside of Watson and Brawly. But I think I'd put him top of D. I could see him going C, depending on how much you value early game value, you know? Definitely an A tier mon. Donphan is amazing. I would probably put him here. And it's one of the better rapid spinners. It gets Ice Shard, it gets Knock Off, it gets Bulldoze. I feel like Dragalge as a Pokemon isn't bad, but there is a Pokemon that does what Dragalge does better in like almost every instance, it feels like. But that said, I had a Dragalge in my winning run that I got in late game on accident. <laughs> I meant to pull something else. I think I meant to pull like Dragonite or something, but I accidentally pulled Dragalge. I think I was supposed to like surf over, I don't remember, but it's not great, but it actually was better than I thought it would be. With that said, I really can't see it being higher than like D tier. Although, I think part of what sucks is like, you can get Skrelp, but it's on a route where you wouldn't want to get Skrelp. All right, Dragapult though, the other drag. Instant S tier, one of the best Pokemon in the game. Dreepy is my all time favorite Pokemon. Ghost Dragon is an amazing typing. Dragapult is incredibly fast. It actually used to get U-turn on the older patch, which was crazy. And you used to be able to pull it from game corner. Dragon Knight. I think Dragonite gets, okay, I think I've heard people say that Dragonite's whatever. It's really good. It is 100% A tier. I would probably put it here. It's really, really good. I There is no doubt in my mind that Dragonite would be a pretty solid E4 mon. Drapion doesn't, it kind of does piss damage, if I'm being honest. It's really good on the Gauntlet, the Meteor Falls Gauntlet. It beats Maxi's Zarud. It's a, obviously a dark type. It's pretty good on Taint Liza. Either high B or low A, but I'm going to put it low A. I think it's better than Ampharos. 
I would probably put it here. Dreadnought is, again, really, really good. I don't know. It's just like a really standard, like, rock water type with, like, it's bulky, does pretty good damage. You get two abilities. I think Battle Armor is definitely the better of the two. Like, I don't know. Maybe there's a Pokemon that has a ground move that Arcanine can't fight, but, like, Battle Armor Dreadnought's not dead to it, right? And this is a really good alternative. It's it's pretty solid. I would put it high B. I'm definitely not this high, though. Like, probably... I think this is reasonable. It's, like, it's a pretty good one. You're not really complaining. It's it's really nice early. Drift Blim is weird. It gets Unburden. Uh, is it always... No, I don't think it's always Unburden, right? I'm pretty sure it's 50-50. Yeah, un Unburden or Aftermath. I've seen both get used, actually. I think it's, like, definitely just a solid B-tier mon, but I, I think it might be a little bit unexplored. I would probably put it here. It's probably pretty good. It's fun to use, too, when, when I had it. Drudagon. So the extent of Drudagon's usefulness is he's actually really good on... I think it's the Penguin Bridge rival. I think he can, like... I don't know if... It, I don't think it's, like, a full sweep. Maybe it is. But with a good enough Drudagon, it can, like, absolutely pop off on that fight. But you can also get Weirdier in Drudagon, and it's like, okay... <laughs> Not what I want, obviously. You can get it in Desert Underpass, and it's never good either. Not a good Mon. I'm going to put it D tier, though, just because I know it has value on Penguin Bridge Rival. I've never used Duraludon. I saw a flag on HG complaining about Duraludon, but then Duraludon did something. I really, really genuinely don't know how good it is. I I, I, I want to put it in unused, or not used, because I, I genuinely have no clue how good it is. Uh, I know it's physically bulky, and it does decent damage. I wish I could say more. If you've used Duraludon, let me know in the comments how good you think it is. I just don't really, I just don't know. I don't want to give an opinion on it because I can't even imagine how good it is within the context of the game. Durant is pretty good. So it's 50-50 ability. You either get Hustle or Swarm. Swarm, if you don't know, it's essentially Blaze or like Overgrow or whatever, but for bug type moves, which is pretty good because Durant has good speed. If you do get Hustle though, you can use Hustle Smart Strike, which is pretty good. It's definitely a solid Pokemon. I would put it like here in B tier. It's, it's like pretty good. I know Peach Out got a lot of use out of it out of his winning run. Electros. Okay, this Pokemon is not fantastic. There's a lot of scale moves you can use, but you don't really want to use them on your Electros. I wish it was better because I think it's a really cool Mon and Levitate is obviously really good. I'd probably put him like here. Actually, I don't know. He's, he's not very good. I'll put him here. He's, he's not a very good Pokemon, unfortunately. Eldegoss, on the other hand, is really good. Now, Eldegoss really excels in early game. If you don't know what its ability does, it's Cotton Down, which drops the speed of any Pokemon that hits it. Not fi not just a contact move, but any move. Eldegoss practically makes Roxanne free, honestly. It's good on Winona. It's really good on Winona. It, it's it's just like a really solid Pokemon. Gets Synthesis. Cotton Down's amazing. It gets Rapid Spin. I would probably put it above Chestnut. It, it's really, really... Cotton Down is like an insanely good ability. Electivire. I have never seen anybody use this ever, but I had to sack into it. I, I honestly just have no idea how good this thing is. It's like a decently fast... His Sui Electrode. Okay, the thing about it is it's a guaranteed encounter, which means there's a lot of data for it. But a uh, Volt Switch plus Insanely Fast Pokemon is very, very, very good. It is a lock for A tier. I would probably put it around here. Embor. The only time I've... Actually, I don't think I've ever seen anybody have an Embor either. This is not a Pokemon that gets used. A lot of the Pokemon and not used, I could probably slot into B tier, but... Has anybody used Embor? Has anybody ever used this thing? Has anybody ever used Cinderace or... Hisui and Deku Dewey, like, have you, like, please tell me. I'm so curious. Enamorous is really good. This is obviously a roamer. I think it's the first roaming legendary we have. If you don't know, once you, what is it? It's once you beat, um, once you get through all the erratic weather stuff, you get Devon Radar or whatever it's called. And then there's a list of roamer legendaries that will fly around the map and you can leave routes open. Don't like purposefully not get an encounter on those routes and catch a roamer there as well. The catch rates on them are very bad, but you get two guaranteed master balls, one in Aqua Hideout and then one in Victory Road. Cavalier, Escavalier. This Pokemon is really underrated. The thing is, it's so slow. It's like a bulky tank with decent coverage. I think this Pokemon is really solid. I would probably put it up here in high B tier. It's really, really cool. Excadrill is, on the other hand, also amazing. The thing, the one complaint I have about Excadrill is sometimes you get one that's too high a level that doesn't have rapid spin and you have to scale it. This thing is S tier, I think without a doubt. Come to the Elite Four, it gets rapid spin. It's not super frail. Excadrill has like really high HP. I would almost be more inclined to make a separate tier list for them because they're Pokemon that you only get within like the last 5% of the game for the most part. You don't get to use it much, but it's like definitely S tier. It's a fairy flying type. Alolan and regular Exeggutor. So regular Exeggutor has come to the Elite Four. Shout out to Bach Nation. This thing gets Chlorophyll. It's pretty good in sun. I, I It's an interesting typing where it, it walls certain stuff decently well. Just like a, a pretty well-statted Pokemon. I think I would put it in B tier. 
A lull in Exeggutor is more interesting in my opinion. It gets harvest. I think it's 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 guaranteed to harvest in the sun or something like that. And you just like keep harvesting the Custat Berry until you eventually die. So it basically takes three Pokemon and then you die. And I'm pretty sure you keep the Custat Berry or something like that. I, I, I could be a little off. I think, however, I'm going to put them together because I think they're both pretty good. I, I think this one is a little bit better though. I think the Ex Alolan Exeggutor is a little better. Feraligator is some hot garbage, dude. Okay. I honestly don't know if you can get Feraligator outside of one place and that is little root town you can fish up a totodile it is the most disappointing pokemon ever you get almost no coverage outside of like brick break ice punch i guess you get natural gift which is okay i have a hard time not putting him in f tier you don't do a ton of damage there are multiple pokemon that do your job better float soul probably does its job better gyarados probably does its job better there's definitely more swamper would probably do its job better i just don't know what this has over any other pokemon of its like archetype and it's like not readily available you like kind of have to go out of your way and it's the worst thing on its table stinky pokemon ferrothorn is so i don't know why you don't get iron barbs on this but you get it on toga tomorrow that feels interesting maybe it's too good i don't know i think it just beats the kyogre on wallace though right it probably beats the kyogre on a uh, archie as well I, I think it's like probably decent i would probably put it like here i think that's reasonable floatzel is in my opinion one of the most iv dependent pokemon in the entire game and if it has really good speed or not really good speed but like decent speed and good attack it can straight up kill the uh indeed lead on crr if it, it's if it's a really good float soul it ends up being really good and i think that averages it out to b tier i think a really good float soul is a tier and i think a really bad float soul is like f tier i think it averages out to around b tier i think it's pretty good but it's like a pretty good mon a, a really good float soul kind of pops off on winona florages is okay it's really specially bulky it gets defog but you're not getting it until super late into the game outside of that like it doesn't hit super hard at this point you definitely already have another fairy type i have never once in my life had a good flag on they're all absolute trash every single time i have one its ivs are like piss it gets first impression if you delay the trap inch evolution to 44 which is really good its typing is is pretty decent for certain things you can get scale shot on it draco meteor is pretty good i think it's a pretty solid mon i don't want to put it a tier though i want to put it high b i would probably put it like around here okay i had frost last once and it was i'm pretty sure the frost last i had was zero special attack one speed sassy can we talk about Frostlash's stat spread? 70 HP, 80 attack, 70 defense, 80 special attack, 70 de special defense, and 110 speed. Can we put that on the screen for a second? What is this stat spread? Like, what is that? It does piss damage. Where's its utility in? Icy Wind? You get Icy Wind, you get Will-O-Wisp. I, I want to put it F tier, but it's a ghost type, so I don't know if I can. It's so useless. And it's not on a table where you would ever, like, be like, oh yeah, I'd be okay getting that. It's really, really bad. I don't even think being a ghost type makes up for it. Glade is interesting because one, Glade is so ugly, by the way. I just wanted to point that out. But uh, it gets a Mega, which is pretty good. The Mega Evolution, I know for certain can come to the Elite Four, but it's pretty decent. It gets inner focus. Uh, like I said, physical fighting, or sorry, physical psychic types are pretty niche and pretty good. I would be inclined to put it upper B tier, probably around uh, here. Actually, I'd probably put it here. Galvantula, I actually really like this Pokemon. It's not like fantastic or anything, but it's definitely good. I really can't overstate how good Volt Switch and U-Turn and Flip Turn and stuff are. It's amazing. It's just like, it, it does that and it can sticky web but I think it's pretty solid. I would put it probably right above Clawitzer. Garchomp. Okay, I've used Garchomp twice, and both times I got it were in Magma Hideout, and it was pretty good, but I I was constantly like, this isn't as good as I thought it would be. But it's definitely a really solid Pokemon. I, I think it's come to the Elite Four. Has it? I want to say it's come to the Elite Four. Hold on, let me, let me double check that one for you guys. Okay, it has come to the Elite Four. Omar and Gremmy both brought it. Shoutouts to them. Garchomp's like, uh, and from my experience using it, it's really good. I would probably put it like around here as well, like with Dragonite. Gardevoir, another Pokemon that has a Mega that has come to the Elite Four. It's definitely really solid. I think throughout the game, it doesn't, it's it's not like uh, mind-blowingly good or anything, but I think it's definitely pretty solid. I would put it like around here. Gastrodon is okay. It's like, it doesn't do a ton of damage. It's typing is good. I don't think it's amazing. I I'd probably honestly rather have Crustal than it, but I, I think I'd rather have it than Kaparaja. Gengar, I actually haven't used Gengar in this game, but it's it's a Gengar, right? You get Mega Gengar. I don't know. I don't have a lot to say about it, honestly. I haven't I haven't used it and I haven't seen anybody use it. But I know it's I know it's pretty decent. I, I just have a hard time seeing this in A tier. Or sorry, an S tier, obviously. So it's somewhere between B and A. I don't know. I feel weird ranking it without knowing. I, th I think I'm just gonna throw it in A. Ground Dragon is an amazing typing. I'd probably put it over Dragonite. Okay, Glalie's funny. The earliest you can get Glalie 
is Roxanne, right? I've looked it up multiple times because I think this thing is so funny. It beats the Zygarde on the Roxanne fight. Outside of that, I don't really know what it does. Uh, it's definitely not very good. It's definitely in the D tier. Liscor is, you don't get poison heal. It's a good counter to Norman's Meloetta, which can be a little bit threatening. Tailwind is obviously really solid. You get like decent utility moves. It's just like pretty solid. I would probably put it up here with Crobat. It's a pretty good mod. I haven't used it a ton, but I know it's it's decent, yeah. Maybe I could even put it A tier. I'm gonna put it top of B. Golduck, oh my dude. Okay, for a long time to me, Golduck was, you can fish up Golduck on this route. Why would you ever do that? Or Psyduck rather. It evolves at 26 and it gets Brick Break, which means if you had a Psyduck, you could use a candy on it for Roxanne and you could use Brick Break, which is funny. This thing, is, it was it was pretty good, but it, in the grand scheme of things, it's not amazing. I would probably put it down here in the C tier, but it, it definitely has its use. I would be interested to see a run with an early Golduck. Alolan Golem is not amazing. It's typing is like interesting, I guess. You, you get times four weakness to ground moves. You're not very specially bulky. You have pretty good defensive bulk, but I just don't think it's like well equipped for like a lot of the threats in the game. I, I don't think it's amazing. I would put it in like lower C tier. It's just all right, I guess. All right, Glycopod, I think is the single best Pokemon in the entire game. I have an entire video. I'll put it on screen or whatever here. I don't know how this works, editor. I have a, a video talking about how good uh, these two bugs are in Run and Bun and why they're so good. I would highly recommend checking it out. I really, really loved putting it together. But Glycopod, if you don't know, just a quick breakdown, gets the ability Emergency Exit, which forcefully exits it out of battle upon reaching below 50% of its maximum HP. What you can do is you can pre-damage your Glycopod, who has really good bulk, by the way. He's a really bulky Pokemon. You can pre-damage your Glycopod to below low 50% HP and uh, get exited out for free, which gives you a free switch essentially. And since he's so bulky, you can do that on a lot of different moves. Where this becomes even better is, I'm pretty sure this is a bug. You can hold a citrus berry and go above 50% HP after getting put below 50% HP, still exit out and then exit out again later if you want to, which if you think about it, it is pretty much two eject buttons. You get two free eject buttons, an item which you normally only get one of throughout the entire game at the very end of the game through beating optionals. So it is an unlimited eject button that you can use twice per fight half the time on a very, very bulk, bulky Pokemon that also does decent damage and has first impression. Sorry about the change in lighting. Um, I turned my bedroom light off. I have a lizard and I wanted to let him sleep. There are two Gudra forms, obviously. The Hisui one is fantastic. Uh, it is a, a lock at A tier. It's come to the Elite Four. Very, very solid, bulky monster. Really good with Assault Vest. I would probably put it here. I think it's better. Why is Basculate? I think this thing should be lower. This thing is going in the not used tier. You are never, ever using this. I, there is never a single reason to use regular Gudra over Hisui Gudra, I'm pretty sure. I, I cannot think of anything. Gorbis, Run and Bun champion Gorbis, mind you. So uh, despite being a champion, this thing is not very good. It does get Swift Swim. Uh, it has pretty good special attack, like pretty solid, but it's a pure water type. It gets Flip Turn, which is uh, obviously a really good move. I would put it somewhere in the D tier. Gorgeist. So I used this Pokemon once and I used it as an explosion bot. Just like looking at stuff it gets, right? Nothing special. I I'm more inclined to put it like about here. Not a Pokemon to write home about or anything like that. Granbull, the best thing about Granbull is that it's a fairy type. I had a Granbull in one of my runs that had such insanely good IVs that I was determined to make it work, but it really is just a fairy type, and that is nice. He also gets Intimidate, which is obviously really good. He's just, he's Gramble. He's a fairy type. He's like the physical attacking fairy type, I guess. Like, he is one of those. Not much to say. Greninja, though, is very good. Um, there, it, the best way, or like, I guess the most common way people get Greninja is through Petalburg City Delay. For once you get Surf, you can either get a Froakie or a Poplio. And generally, people want Primarina because Primarina is such a good Elite Four Mon. Greninja is definitely more IV dependent. If you have a Greninja with pretty bad IVs, it's not nearly as good as a uh, Primarina. But Greninja goes crazy. This thing is really good. I'm definitely putting it in A tier. I would probably put it around here. It's really solid. I think I'll move it down a little bit just because it's a little bit IV dependent, but it's really solid. It's it's really good. You get Fling, which is amazing. Uh, Grimmsnarl is also a really, really good Pokemon. In my third farthest attempt, which was attempt 320, I had a Grimmsnarl and I got it in Shoal Cave and it put in work on Tain Liza's, or yeah, on Tain Liza's gym and on Tain Liza itself. Really solid Pokemon. I would definitely put it in A tier. I think on the lower end of A tier, but I would probably say it's like around here. It's it's really, really good. Gyarados, I think is 100% A tier Mon. 
yeah, it's gotta be on the lower end of A tier, but Hariyama is also really good. And Hariyama is one of those Pokemon that gets two abilities, both of which are good. Guts makes it hit like a truck, but Hariyama, you just get two additional resistances, which is really nice. And you get it really early. It's really good for Roxanne with thick fat. It has really good resistances. I'd put it like B tier, probably around here, maybe probably right here. Pretty good mon. Hatterene, once you start getting access to other fairies, it completely nose dives off a cliff from my experience. It's really slow, pretty good damage, pretty good bulk. It's like just B tier, I think, because of its early game, but I would put it like around here. It's like a pretty, pretty solid Pokemon. Having a fairy type that early is really nice. Halucha is a volatile one. So it's 50-50 ability. Is it Mold Breaker? What's the other ability? Or is it Limber? Yep. Yeah. So you either get Limber, which is whatever, I guess. I guess it's not like a bad ability to have, but the other ability is on Burden which if you remember talking about Drifblim, the main reason it's amazing is you can lead or you can just go Halucha pre-frozen and it has an immunity, holding an Asper Berry, dethaw immediately, get your unburden boost, be really fast and do a lot of damage, right? With Encore and an immunity is really, really broken. The thing is, I'm not gonna put it in S tier because it's unburdened half the time. So I'm gonna put it here. Heracross, oh ho ho. Okay, it's really, really, really good. I pulled Heracross in my winning run because I had nothing to beat Vito's Breloom. I was, I was like, okay, if I get Pinsir, it probably beats Breloom. If I get Heracross, it's better than Pinsir and it probably beats Breloom. And it did. And then once I got the Mega, it was absolutely amazing. This thing is a lock at A tier. It's definitely better than Conkeldur with the Mega. It's definitely better than this. I would put it around here. Okay, so these three, Hitmonlee is the best early, without a doubt. It's amazing. On, it's good on Brawly, like it's solid. It's amazing on Roxanne. It's good on Watson. It's good on Norman. And then it falls off a little bit. Kind of want to put Hitmonlee in low A because it is just so good in early game. Hitmonchan is not good. I will say though, people over hate it because it feels like it never has Iron Fist. It's still like a decent fighting type. It's like not good, but not bad like horrible or anything. I would put it comfortably in C tier. It's either Inner Focus, which is a good ability, or Iron Fist. And then Hitmon Top is kind of somewhere in the middle. It gets two abilities. It's Intimidate and Technician. I think at its peak, it's better than Hitmonlee because of how good Hitmonlee is early game. And it is really, really, really good. I would put Hitmonlee as the best. Maybe you disagree. I don't think Hitmon Top is that good. Definitely like a solid Pokemon. Punch Crow is solid. It's like pretty decent. There's not a ton to say about it. It gets Sucker Punch, it gets Tailwind, it gets the Fog. It gets all like the flying utility moves. I'd put it like somewhere in like like lower B tier, like probably beer. Pretty good Pokemon, also one of my favorites. Houndoom is okay. It was good in Taint and Liza's gym. Houndoom was good on Taint and Liza themselves. Once you're Mega Houndoom and you get solar power, it's pretty good on the erratic weather routes. It's like an all right Mon. I would put it in B tier overall, probably somewhere on the lower end. The Mega is pretty decent though. I think it's pretty solid. I, I wonder if it could work for the uh, Elite Four, honestly. Huntail is around where Gorbis is, although uh, there's a recently discovered trick with Huntail, I think. Okay, so there are three Pokemon lines that get Dive and Huntail is one of them. There's a trick you can do in Run and Run where if you have a Pokemon with Dive, you can use Dive before you get access to the HM, which I think is an oversight. Not a good Pokemon. It's a decent early game desperation answer. Hydreigon is really, really good. I would honestly go as far as to say it is about here. Actually, I'd put it here. I think it's the top of A tier. This Pokemon's come to the Elite Four. It gets U-turn, it gets Tailwind, it gets Roost, it gets Dragon, Dark Stab. Uh, I almost even want to put it S tier. I think I'm going to actually. This Pokemon is amazing. So, 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 so good. It is incredible. And baiting fairy moves is like a very, very nice thing. Hypno. Ooh, okay. So I used to do this thing on my stream where I would let my chatters use channel points to pick one of my early game encounters for a run. It was just like an engagement for fun sort of thing. And they loved giving me drowsy because like, why wouldn't they? I used drowsy to take two on Roxanne once or not on Roxanne, Brawly. He's not good at all. I actually, in fact, I would put him in F tier because like, why would you ever like, you don't want this at any point. Maybe Hypno is not the worst Pokemon ever, but it's on a table full of good stuff and i don't know what a single other place you can get it other than granite cave incineroar on the other hand is very good it's not super common but it's not super uncommon either you can get it in um what's that place called same place you can get uh glycopod scorch slab but uh it's definitely really good it's like a solid a tier mon for sure it's, it's really good i've never used it myself but i know people have really good things to say about it and talion i've never used and i've never seen anybody use it so okay this is an easy one i don't want to put it in unused because i've never seen anybody use it the only way to get it is to delay little root like for it's it's good for a lot of the same reason that greninja is good which is fast torrent, but I'm pretty sure Inteleon has a higher base special attack and a higher base speed than Greninja, right? I, I feel like it's just gotta be high B tier. I would probably put it like here. I've never used it, but I'm going to. Jellicent is pretty decent as well. I would put it in B tier, probably like around here. Its typing is really good. It's pretty bulky and it is really good on space tag, if I remember correctly, because you get water spout, right? Or maybe I'm misinformed, but Jinx is it doesn't get used. With that said, I don't think it's like necessarily terrible. I would probably see it going like C tier, but doesn't get used. 
Kabutops is pretty good. I would put it in high B tier. I had a really good Kabutops on my winning run that I had lost too early due to a mistake. I'd put it in like upper B tier, probably around here. Maybe here. It's pretty good. It gets rapid spin. Kangaskhan is just so mid. It's like, it's the the, what, the place you get Kangaskhan, you don't get the Mega. Place you get it is where you can get Beedrill. You're always disappointed in it. With that said, I it's like a fake out mon, which provides more than these freaks. Kecleon is by default really, really good. It's gotta be A tier. So it's a guaranteed encounter. It's your Fortree City encounter. I wanna rank these two now. Cast Form is a guaranteed encounter, Weather Institute. And while it is terrible, it holds the Life Orb. And that's the only way to get the Life Orb. Cast form in and of itself is really, really bad. The only thing cast form is really used for is uh, a sack, aka an eject button. Its real value comes in the life orb. And because of that, it's an S tier mon, just because of its S its, its life orb value. As a mon itself, it is F tier, just so you know. Kecleon is similar because it's a guaranteed encounter, but I'd, I would put it A tier. Kecleon gets fake out. It's really, really good in magma hideout. Uh, well, I guess not really, really good, but it's really solid on Tabitha and magma hideout. Kingdra, Horsey and Seedra early game are really good. You can also get a dragon scale off of a horsey. It's a 5% chance, 20% chance if you have compound eyes. I would put it in upper B tier around Hitmonlee. Kingler is much like Crawdont. They're pretty similar. They're both protect mons that have 50-50 abilities. Cleavor is never used. Although, if you were to use it, you would be very disappointed. This thing does not learn Rock Slide. Oh, come on. Oh, okay. I brought this to my Elite Four. This was a really, really good Pokemon in my Elite Four. I won't spoil it because the video will be coming out soon, but I brought this to my Elite Four and it had a really, really cool line on Glacia. If you know, you know, you're a real one. I would say he is probably somewhere in the lower end of A tier. Dragon Fighting is not like an amazing typing, but I would probably put him around here. Crocodile is definitely pretty decent. I would put him in B tier towards the higher end of B tier. And he's pretty good like for early game when you get him. Like you get, uh, uh surprisingly, Sandile is pretty good on Brawly because he's a rock resist with Intimidate, which is nice. Landorus, okay. When it comes to the roamers, Landorus is not great. Obviously he's not the Therian form, so he doesn't get Intimidate. So he gets, uh, what? Is it Sheer Force? No, Sand Force. That's what I'm thinking of. He gets Sand Force, which is not very useful. I honestly think he's just like a B tier mon. He's just very average, I think. Lantern is uh, not as good in this game as it is in other games, but it's definitely not bad at all. I would consider it similar to here. It gets Volt Absorb. It's like the only mod in the entire game that gets an immunity ability. Latias. Latias was recently champed. Was it Bazo that champed it? Shout out to iBazo. It is the more defensive, less good version of Latios. I would also probably put it somewhere in B tier. I think it's more unexplored. I put it around near Landorus. It gets. It doesn't get Draco Meteor is the big thing that separates it from Latios, but it does get Protect, which is, as we know, a very good tool. Latios, on the other hand, is definitely S tier. I brought this to my Elite Four as my roamer. It's, it gets Draco Meteor, it gets Tailwind, it gets Ice Beam, Thunderbolt. It shouldn't have to be said why Latios is good. Uh, I get Psychic, obviously. And then Ledian. Yep, right up there. No, Ledian is not good. One thing it does have is Encore. And I think that puts it in C tier. No, you know what? We'll put him bottom of C tier. Because there's definitely stuff you can do with like, I don't know, man. Ledian sucks. Ledian sucks. Okay, both Lilligans are both pretty good. I think his Sui Lilligan is like the top of B tier. It's like good, right? It gets close combat. It gets a uh, Leaf Blade, all that stuff. With Chlorophyll, I could imagine this being, you know what? No, because it can get Chlorophyll, I'll put it here. His, uh, the regular Lilligan, I would put in B tier. It's like, it's probably like i mean it's like a it's like a grass type right with chlorophyll yeah i mean like it's it is a grass type that gets leaf swarm with chlorophyll that is what it does lopany however is very good definitely an a tier it gets fake out it gets u-turn and it gets mega lopany which gets scrappy which is really nice on top of just hitting like a truck i probably put it right around uh here lucario i think is really really underrated i think he's really good special fighting coverage much like physical psychic coverage in a weird way is really really nice vacuum wave is a really good move to have i think i used it to beat matt's cartana with vacuum wave it just nuked it i think it's pretty good i would either put it very high b tier or low A. I think I'm gonna put it right here at the very top of B tier. It's a really good Pokemon. I almost wanna put it A if Drapion's A. Now, you know what? I'm gonna put it here and then Drapion comes down to B. Ludicolo is pretty good. It's a. I, I think it's similar to Kingdra. Pretty solid Pokemon. It's not as good early game. You can delay it for Giga Drain or you can delay low tide for Giga Drain. Luminion is trash. It is definitely an F tier Mon. The best thing Luminion really does is chip hit him on top on brawly and then die although it does get swift swim i'm pretty sure i think it gets u-turn as well you know what we'll put a d tier because it gets u-turn i think that's enough because these guys don't have anything going for them really luxray is very very average it doesn't really do anything special so i think i want to put it d tier but it does get intimidate which is nice it's okay early game i'll put a c tier Ooh, the lichen rocks are fun okay so this is easily the best one this goes b tier um, i would probably put it around here 
Accelerock's really good. This one is not as good. I would put this one in the C tier, maybe even D tier. This one's not very good. I'll put him down here. And then uh, this one is pretty good. This one gets no guard, which is really nice. I think it is very, very on par with this one. However, I would put it a little bit lower. This one is really, really good for Tabitha's Yon Mega in Magma Hideout, which is really, really, really problematic. You can just switch in or like sack into Yon Mega and then Accelerate Rock and it dies. This one gets no guard with Stone Edge, which is really, really cool. It also means you can't miss on Bright Powder, which is nice. It's also better. It's a little bit bulkier, so you can use this on Flannery if you have good enough special attack and or special defense and HP. This is F tier. This thing is absolute garbage. I, I had this once and I didn't even evolve Magmar because I thought it would just be worse because Magmar is faster. Magnezone is like a lock at A tier. This thing is really, really good. It's, I mean, electric and seals are really good typing. You have that times four weakness to ground, but like we've mentioned before, that is a really, really good thing. I would put it around here. Mamoswine is also pretty good. This has come to the Elite Four. I don't think it's like a necessarily a, a very common Elite Four Pokemon, but I would probably put it in high B tier as well with all these other Sinnoh goats. I would I would honestly probably put it at the top of B tier. It's really solid. Amistar is actually really good. I think he's very similar to Karakosta in that sense. He just does more damage. You can get Shell Armor, which is really nice. Amistar is really solid. You can get Tickle, which is really good. Tickle lowers the attack and defense of the opposing Pokemon, which is really useful on a Shell Armor Mon. Manectric is pretty not great. However, it does get a Mega. I want to point out that you get Mega Beedrill after Flannery, and you don't get access to this till once you get the, you get the Moss Deep. I don't know, Dexa. I don't think that one was very, uh, well balanced. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Manectric, I think I'm gonna put it here. It's not great, but it has the potential to be decent. Maractus, uh, actually not too bad. When you get Maractus, you generally don't want Maractus because you want, like, an Excadrill or something. But it does get Spiky Shield, it does get Chlorophyll, it gets Weather Ball, it gets Leaf Storm. But I, I would say C tier, like, right here. It's not bad, though. It's a pretty decent one. Masquerade is very, very good. It's definitely an A tier Pokemon. Generally, Intimidate plus a times four fighting resist is really good because 90% of fighting types are physical attackers. I would put this right about uh, pretty here. Mawile. Uh, Mawile hasn't seen a lot of use. Um, I, I feel like Mega Mawile could be decent, but I just don't think this thing's that good. I don't think it's bad. I just, I, I have a hard time seeing it higher than like C tier just because Mawile on its own is not great. But I could be super wrong about this one. Honestly, I could be super wrong. Maybe you've you've used Mawile and you thought it was amazing. Let me know. Medicham, on the other hand, is fantastic. A good Medicham sweeps all of uh, Moss Deep Space Center tag, which is really, really good. Mega Medicham is an unbelievable Pokemon. It's been champed. It's a Rhinomon champion. Meganium is very much, uh, it's very much so okay. It's like right here. It's, it's right there with Lilligant, really. Not much to say about it. Metagross, on the other hand, is really good. Definitely like the tippy top of A, if not S tier. Just, a, we all know Metagross is really good. It's just a really, really solid Pokemon throughout the game. Manchow is, it's all right. Regenerator Mianfu is really good on Brawly because you can take rock moves, fake out the hit on top, and then switch, and you just heal. But it really falls off a cliff once you, you start to get better fighting types. So I will put it in, I'll put it at the bottom of B tier. I think this is fair. Mightyena is actually pretty good, in my opinion. I think Mightyena is one of the better encounters from Route 101. It's, it's not really bad. I think I would definitely put it like high C tier. It's like a pretty good mon, especially early game. Like it, it holds its own with some of the other Pokemon. Melodic is, okay. I think Melodic has E4 potential. I had it in my winning run. I thought about bringing it, but I didn't. I think it does have E4 potential. The thing is it's very, very uncommon and it's a little too niche because of that. I, I didn't really get a ton of use out of it. There's just like better bulky water types, but it's not bad. I'll put it right. I think I'd put it right here. It's like, okay, Icy Wind plus Marvel Scale could be really good. Mudsdale uh, is pretty good. It's really solid early game. It's really good on Watson. It's one of the better Shell Slowbro answers. Falls off a little bit once you start to get like Excadrill and stuff, if you do get that, but it's pretty good. Up here, like a little bit above these guys. Alolan Muck, I also think is really solid. I'd put him up here with Drapion. A lot of the time people boom him on Mount Pyre, which is, he's one of the better mons for that because you essentially anything that the AI can't kill. Musharna is super good actually i would put it somewhere in like the middle of b tier like probably honestly like here it's really good you get synchronized for sure that could be a really good synchronized nature if you don't know if you lead a synchronized pokemon you have like a i don't know the exact number like 50 percent maybe you have a chance of the pokemon that you encounter also having that ability nitto king is not fantastic but i would put him in c tier he's like okay his typing is interesting. I'd put him at the top of C tier. And Nitto Queen, I would also put like around here. They're very similar. You're not really using them for offense most of the time. You're using them as like a pivot. Norvin on the other hand is really solid. Definitely somewhere in A tier. 
I'd put it like around here. I haven't really used it a lot. Obstagoon is kind of an interesting one because you you get guts sometimes and you get reckless sometimes. If it's guts, it's a lot better. It's come to the Elite Four. It also gets detect. It used to get obstruct, and when it did, it was like unbelievably broken. But Dexa took that away in a patch. I think I would put it at the low end of A tier because is there's like variance in the ability. Octillery is I honestly would put Octillery in C tier. Now, I've hated on Octillery a lot in the past, but Octillery has a couple of really things, really good things going for it. You can throw Octillery at stuff and not really care if it dies, but it's really, really good for space center tag. I almost want to put it C tier, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep him here just because he's pretty useless for the rest of the game. War Beetle is very mid. I would honestly put it like here. Overquill is also super whatever. It does get explosion though. I think I would put it here. It's like I don't really love it. It's not great. You can get Intimidate though. So I'll, mm, no, I'll put it here. Okay, Pangoro, I think is underrated. It's not bad. You you get two abilities. You get Mold Breaker and you get Iron Fist. If you get Iron Fist and you choose to scale Hammer Arm, that's actually, it hits very, very hard. But I, in Taint Liza Gym, there's a Trick Room fight where I used Pangoro to kill literally like six mons. It's it's not bad. It's, it's just niche. I'd put it like right around here. Parasect is, I won't put it in F tier because it's typing is not good, but it can beat the uh, Electros, which is like, okay. It's not very good though. Berserker has been champed recently. Shout out to buy one mil. I haven't had as much success using Berserker as everybody else has. People have said that they really, really like it and that it's really good. I think it's okay. It's like probably somewhere in B tier, in my opinion. Like I would probably put it around here. It, it's either battle armor or I think tough claws. And they're both like decent. You get U-turn, which is pretty good. Pidgeot is a very, very interesting one. Pidgeot on Brawly is like the most disappointing thing ever, but Pidgeot, once you get the Mega, is actually pretty good. No Guard's a really good ability, especially when you have a move like Hurricane, and it's pretty fast with pretty good special attack, and that ends up making it hit pretty hard. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay, Pinsir. I've never used Pinsir from Game Corner, but I did get Pinsir once late game, and the Mega was like a little bit underwhelming for me. I could never really find ways to make it work, but I had also already used my Facade TM, and I think Facade Aerial could be really, really useful. And with that said, he's very niche, and I, I do think that he could be a really, really useful Pokemon. I don't know. I'd have to see it to believe it, but I, I do I, I do think he's like has a niche. Porygon Z, although I do think it has one thing going for it, and that is Trace on Tate and Liza's and Hoopa's leftovers, or L Magician to get leftovers, so I think it has that going for it. It's pretty garbage though, otherwise. You probably would want to keep it as a Porygon too, if I'm being honest. Primarina is for sure S tier. I've gone on record saying I think Primarina is slightly overrated. I think Greninja is like just as good throughout most of the game, but Primarina is so, 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 so good for the Elite Four and so good for like certain really tough fights. Probopass doesn't get used a lot, but he's guaranteed Magnet Pull, which is nice. I think he's probably somewhere in C tier as like a niche pivot mon. Pyroar is again, okay. It's a, it does pretty good damage. It's like a special attacking fire type. I think it's probably like here, I, I would say. It's strictly a overheat guy. Quillfish is really, really nice early game. It's good. It's really good on Brawly. It's pretty good on Roxanne as a lead. It's a decent sack. You can explode it. It's like pretty good. I would say B tier. Probably like around here. Solid Pokemon, honestly. Alolan Raichu and Raichu are... I think Alolan's definitely better. I think I'd put it somewhere down here. Raichu... Normal Raichu is like not really that good in my opinion. Rampardos is pretty awful. The trade-off on getting Rampardos... Well, there's one place you can get it and that's a fossil. It is probably the worst fossil you can get. It's not good. Rapidash is pretty pretty decent in my opinion. I, I think it's like right up here with Senescorch. Reuniclus is also not great in my opinion. It's like a little bit too niche and it doesn't do a ton. And you get it, you either get it somewhere where you don't want it or you get it really late. So I just, it's not great. But it, it hits like pretty hard and it gets recover. Rhyperior is really good. Uh, it actually very recently came to the Elite Four as well. I think it's the newest champion. You get Solid Rock, right? I think you get Solid Rock or Reckless. Really solid Pokemon, obviously an immunity. Very, very good defense. Very bad special defense. Bates moves really well. Grass and water moves. Rhyperior is really good though. Ribombi is also really good. It's a fast fairy type. Has like, it does pretty decent damage. A fairy type is obviously really good. It's one of the first ones you can get. I think I would put it at the like top of B tier. Really solid Pokemon. Bug fairy is like a, honestly a pretty decent typing. Rillaboom, I've, I've like never seen used. I, I really do not know how good this thing is. I feel like it's either really, really good or like around like, I, don't, I, I really don't know. It's probably pretty good. I've just, I've not seen it used. So if you know, let me know if you have an opinion on Rillaboom. I've not seen it once though. And I don't want to make an estimate because I feel like it, it has variance. Roserade is really solid though. This is also an E4 mod, or well, it's not like an E4 mod, but it's brain of the, 
been to the Elite Four. I would also say high B tier. If it's Technician, it's a lot better. Sableye is F tier. You don't get the Mega. You don't get it until super late into the game. And it does literally nothing. It can have stall. You have to scale half of its good moves. It's absolutely terrible. One of the worst mods in the game for sure. Salamence. I have not used Salamence. It's been champed. You don't get the Mega, but it's definitely good. I, I'm just going to throw it up here with these guys. It's definitely really good. You get Intimidate, obviously. A uh, Hisui Samurai, I think is pretty decent. I Don't you get Encore if you get it as a Oshawa? You get it? You get Encore as a regular samurai. Yeah, so you have to get it as a duo because Hisui doesn't learn it. But it's it's pretty decent. I had it before. I would probably say it's like somewhere in B tier. Eh, I'd probably put it around like here. It, it's like decent. And then the regular one, I honestly have no idea. I've never seen it get used. Alolan Sand Slash is actually pretty good. I would honestly put it around here. It's pretty good. Its typing is nice. It gets Ice Shard. It's good early game. Sock I've not used, but, 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 hot take. I feel like Sock is really good. I've not used it. I will in another run. I have not used it. Throw, on the other hand, is pretty good, actually. Throw is, like, pretty decent. It's a really bulky fighting type that gets recover and fling. It's pretty good. I, I would put it, like, here, honestly. It it's not bad. He was, like, one of my better Pokemon. He was going kind of crazy. Sawsbuck is not great. It's good for the Lightning Rod double battle before Shell. Other than that, it's not great, though. I put it, like, around here. Sceptile, however, is amazing. I'm almost tempted to put it in the nest here. It's really, really, really good. But I think I'm going to put it top of A. I brought it to my Elite Four. It gets Detect and Leaf Storm, and that's all you need. Oh, I guess Magical Leaf as well for Bright Powder Mons. It's so good. It's far and away the best Hoenn starter that you get on Lava Ridge. Scizor is also really good. I have only ever really used... Well, no, I used Scizor a little bit. I had a run where I had a Scyther, and it was really good. And I kept it as a Scyther because I didn't have... Have a, a really good fighting resist but uh it was really good so ranking both of them i would put them like around here scyther and scissor are both really good and you get access to the mega super late which i could see coming to the elite four scyther and scissor are both really solid i would definitely put them in a tier scyther was really really fun to use too scallopede is okay it's good on shell split when you get it i would put it down here with mian and avalug it's like it's like decent oh scyther's here okay I'm gonna put that with Scizor. They're both really good. Seismitoad is definitely B tier. I would put him right here with Dreadnaw. He's really, really good early game, and then he falls off a lot, just like Dreadnaw. But he doesn't fall off as much, so I'll put him, like, right here. Sharpedo is C tier, I think. I think Sharpedo is one of those Pokemon that's really IV dependent, but a good Sharpedo is really nice. It's a decent desperation attempt for Shell Slowbro. Shift Tree is also okay. I would put it down here with, with Sharpedo as well. Sigilyph, I have not used, but Pichal got a lot of use out of it. I, I think I'm going to put it in B tier. It's, like, it, it was so good. I, like, Psycho Shift, it's a really good fighting resist. It's It's got so much utility, Tailwind. It's got a lot going for it. It's, like, like surprisingly good uh, and it looks really fun to use psycho shift is a really cool move if you don't know what that does it transfers your status effect onto the enemy so you can like pre-burn will-o-wisp surfetch is okay i'd put it somewhere in higher c tier like i'd probably put it like here you do get first impression which is nice you get inner focus which is nice it has a really good attack stat but that's about it you also get attacked i think right slazzle on the other hand is a very 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 good pokemon um i would honestly put it like right up here it gets Encore with a scale, and you get it for Shell Split. It single-handedly frees up Shell. Skuntank's okay. I would put it down here with Overquill. It's a really good typing. You can explode, get Toxic, knock off. Slowbro is an easy A tier, and I feel like the, the longer the game goes on, the better we see Slowbro is. Mega Slowbro is probably... It's one of, if not the best Mega for the E4. I, I'm not thinking of any other Megas that are, like always better. I guess Beedrill is up there too. It's one of the best megas for the E4, no matter what. Slow King, I don't think you're ever using because I actually, now that I say that, I've used it and it's like, okay. It's like C. It's like very okay, I guess. But you you really want slow, bro. Sneasler is an S tier, 100%. This thing is unbelievable. It is one of the best Pokemon in the game. You get Fake Out, CC, Poison Jab, which is really, really good coverage. You also get Natural Gift, which gives you even more coverage. You get Ice Punch and you get Inner Focus, which is, it works perfectly with Sneasler's ability. It is so, so, so good. Spirit Tomb, I don't really know much about, but I know it's okay. It's like, okay, I guess. I think I'd probably put it a little bit lower than this. It's not really that good. Staraptor? I had in my winning attempt and it was really really good but I did have a really good Staraptor so I'm gonna put it like around here Starmie is not as good as you would expect it to be but it's definitely all right I, I would put it like down here it's like okay eh, I'd probably put it right here it's like all right it's just not as good as you'd expect it to be because for it to get like uh, Thunderbolt and like coverage moves you'd have to use like TMs right Steelix I would also say is somewhere on the upper end of B tier I'd probably put it like right here the mega ended up being really good for me I, I thought it was pretty pretty fun to use it was just like a solid like we know what Steelix does like he's a bulky Pokemon 
Um, he just doesn't really do any damage, but the Mega kind of helps out with that. It makes him hit a little bit harder and heavy slams start to hit like a truck. Stoutland is pretty ass. Um, I would put him in, ooh, actually I think he's F tier. He's pretty bad. He doesn't really do anything. You never want him as your encounter. I used Stoutland as like the best Mon for the job on, what is it, Tori and Tia with the Gothitelle and the Bisharp. It was great. It, it was what I needed and it gets Intimidate. So I think that puts it in D tier by itself. So Stunfisk is actually not bad. He's definitely somewhere in C tier. He has some uses. He's pretty cool. Interesting typing. Very, very okay. I would put him probably... I think Golduck should be a little higher. I'd put him like right here. Swampert is pretty decent. I would put Swampert... I think he's better than Blaziken. I would probably put him like around here. He gets the Protect and he baits grass moves really easily. But he's great as a Protect Mon, which is really nice. Um, you do get the Mega. He's one of the... He's the only of the Hoenn starters that you get access to the Mega. And I could see him coming to the E4. Talonflame is an easy A tier. Um, somewhere in the upper end of A tier. It's a very, very good Pokemon. Doesn't really fall off super hard either. It falls off a little bit though, is what I'll say. Um, I would put it probably here. Really good. It is like the best early game Pokemon bar maybe one. Tauros is not getting used. Although I did pull Game Corner Tauros once to try to hit a Megahorn. I needed a not minus speed Tauros and to hit a Megahorn on the Andini on CRR and I got a minus speed Tauros and then I got Expanding Force crit. So I I don't know. I don't think he's very good, but you do get Intimidate. So I think that's enough to keep out of F tier. Tentacruel is decent. I put it somewhere on the lower end of B tier, like probably around here. It's like, okay. It's just another one of those mons that got kind of power crept from Gen 1. Doesn't hit very hard. It's like pretty fast and it walls certain archetypes of water types pretty well. Well, Thunderous is really, really good. It's one of the better roamers. I would put it probably around here. It's definitely an S tier Pokemon. Volt Switch is amazing. You get Prankster Thunder Wave, which is really good. Electro Web, just like an overall really, really good Pokemon. It's pretty self-explanatory what he does. It's been brought to the E4 multiple times. Tokenomaru is an easy lock for S tier. Probably in the grand scheme of things, the real best Pokemon in the game because you can get it immediately you can stall so much in double battles. You bait ground moves perfectly for the rest of your team. It's so good early game. It's really well statted for early game with a really good typing. Amazing for Brawly, amazing for Roxanne, really good for Watson. The best Sinchino counter on Norman, really good for Flannery. I could go on and on and on. In fact, I have gone on and on and on. I have a video talking about why Togedemaru is the best Pokemon in the game. Torkoal is also a newer uh, addition to the Hall of Fame sheet. It is coming to the Elite Four. I would put it somewhere in B tier. Tornadus is pretty widely considered to be the worst of the roamers. Like, Prankster Tailwind's like really not it. I've not used it, so I can't really say, but I think putting it in like C tier is fair. I, I really don't know, honestly. This could be wrong. Maybe someone's had really good success with it in run and melee game, but you never really want it. Toxic Croak is pretty good. He definitely falls off a cliff, but mine and my winning run was really, really good for me. I got it in Duford and it lasted quite a while, but I do think I'm a little bit biased because that was obviously my winning run. So I think he realistically could go like around. I think this is pretty fair. You get fake out. Vacuum Wave's a really nice tool to have and his typing is pretty interesting. Toxtricity is a sleeper, dude. This thing's good. I would put it like right around here. Here. It's actually pretty good. It has good special attack and it has a really, really nice typing. Trevenant is like really niche. I don't think it's amazing. I'm gonna put it here with Gore guys. Like it's, I, I think they're similar. I, I think Trevenant gets Horn Leech. Serena is pretty good. I would put it here. It's pretty solid, but definitely falls off a lot. But Rapid Spin is really nice on it. Pretty decent Pokemon. It's like run of the mill grass type, bulk, pretty bulky with an interesting ability sometimes. Turtonator is also somewhere in B tier. It's pretty good. I would put it around there. Uh, I'd put it around here. It's pretty good. It's really bulky and it's typing is pretty good actually. Fire Dragon's not bad. Okay, I know this thing's really good, but I've not used it. And same with Typhlosion. I know this thing is definitely really good though. I could see it being A tier, but I really have not used it. Someone use this and let me know how it is. Please, I've never seen it used. Tyranitar is unfortunately pretty disappointing, but he's not bad. He's somewhere in B tier, I think. He just has so many weaknesses and so many mons have coverage. Okay, we're getting close to the end. Tyrantrum is pretty decent. Also, I would say B tier. I would put him around Kabutops. He's really interesting because he gets strong draw with like a bunch of fang coverage and stuff, and he has a really high attack stat. Ursaluna, on the other hand, is... I, it's either A or S. I The thing keeping me or the thing keeping me from putting him out of S tier is the fact that he doesn't always get guts. Venusaur is definitely really good. It's not super common though, but it's definitely really good. I would probably just put it like around here. It's a really solid Pokemon. Vespaquin's decent. I, I think it's like the definition of a C tier Mon. Um, I'd probably put it like here. Like it gets Protect. Victory Bell is also a very niche Chlorophyll user. Um, I would probably put it in a similar spot to Vespaquin. It's not fantastic, but it gets Chlorophyll and you can sack it on Maxi. Vivian is A tier, lock. If you don't know about Vivian, <laughs> It's one of the best early game mods in the game. You can get Compound Eyes, which is 100% accurate Sleep Powder, 100% accurate Hurricane. You get Protect. 
and you also get a move called Powder, which a lot of people don't even know what that is. It is a move that you, it's a priority move with plus one priority, where if you use it on a Pokemon using a fire type move, it redirects damage back at them. I would put it probably right here. It, it's amazing. Volcarona, it's gone to the Elite Four, I think. I think it's probably pretty good. I just don't, I think A tier seems fair. It's like definitely a really solid Pokemon. Probably a little bit IV dependent. I think putting it around here is fair. I think it gets U-turn, it gets Bug Buzz, it gets Fiery Dance at level like 99, right? I really haven't used it much myself. I got it once and then I wiped shortly after. It gets Roost. It's just not very common is the thing. Like it's it's a rare encounter on all the routes you get it, but it's it's definitely good. Walrein is also, I see people get so upset at getting Sfeel. That thing is so good once you get it to a Walrein. I think it's A tier but on the lower end. I'd put it here. You get Encore. You get Super Fang. It's really good. Encore is just an amazing move. Being able to Encore Ice type attacks is really, really useful. And being able to Encore Water type attacks is really useful with Walrein because he's kind of like a, a wall when it comes to those Water Ice archetypes. It's like a really good Pokemon overall. I, I, he's really solid. He's really good on CRR. Holds up throughout the game with Encore. It is a scale, but Weavile is another A tier Pokemon. I wouldn't put him S, but I, I do think he's A and he's on the upper end of it. I would put him probably around here. Ice and Dark is pretty good coverage. He's really good for the E4. This is like really good offensive, fast, physical Pokemon. Pretty self-explanatory why he's good. Dark is like really good for the E4 and just really good in this game in general. Weezing is, I don't I don't know how good it is. I know it's not bad. I would probably put it somewhere around here with all these other poison types. I'd probably put it below these two. Actually, I'd probably put it here. Galar Weezing is very good though. I think this also belongs down here at the bottom of A tier. Maybe at the top of B. I'll put it at the bottom of A. It's really good. It's, uh, you can trade Weezing for Galar Weezing in Fortree. You get Neutralizing Gas or Levitate. Levitate obviously removes one of your weaknesses to ground, which means you only have two Psychic and Steel, but if you don't have Levitate and you have Neutralizing Gas, you're weak to ground as well. It's really good in Magma Hideout, from my experience. It's like a really solid put. I'm gonna put it B. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be safe and put it B, but it's really good. Weird Ear is F tier. He is not good. Shoutouts to my Shiny Weird Ear in my winning run, though. Full odds, first encounter, Shiny Weird Ear, um, with really good IVs, but it, I had like the peak possible Weird Ear, and it just, it just doesn't do anything. I will say, though, that fight, no, you know what? It has Intimidate, so I'll put it here. That fight with Neutralizing Gas Weezings, and the slacking and Archaeops, it swept the wheezing side. So shout out to my weirder for that. Zatu is pretty good. It's great early game and it holds up for a bit. It gets U-turn. Um, I would probably put it here. It's pretty solid. You kind of know what you're getting. Yan got a lot of uh, use out of it in one of his runs. Uh, Yan Mega is also a really, really good Pokemon. It gets Detect, so it's really useful in that manner. I think I would put it up there in B tier. It gets it gets Detect as well as... It's it's a really good pivot. It's just really good for Brawly. You can use a scale on Yanma for Ancient Power to evolve Yan Mega for Brawly, which is insane because it's the first gym. I have never used this thing. I have no idea if it's good. I imagine it's decent. This thing is not great though. It gets taunt. It's one of two Pokemon that get taunt. I don't think it was like bad. It was just whatever, I guess. Pretty niche. Taunt could be cool though. Unfortunately, Illusion does not work on the AI. It always knows, but that'd be cool. I think Cresselia is actually underrated. I saw Moxie use it very well, and I saw Pichal use it very well. Obviously, it was champed. I think it's upper B tier. I think it's better than Landorus. Psycho Shift is a crazy move, and you can heal for like a, a lot. Superior, this is literally Sceptile, but worse. I've used it twice. It is Sceptile, but worse. It fills a niche. It's a fast grass type, and that is literally it. I've never used this, and I've never seen anybody use this. It's a fairy type, though, so. This, I, I, I don't know about the mythicals, honestly. I, I really am just not sure. Um, I know Moxie used Jirachi in his Elite Four. I really don't know. I've never used the mythicals. I don't know enough about them. Um, although I think that they're not horrible, probably. Mew seems really bad. Honestly, if anybody's used the mythicals, leave a comment below because I, I really don't know. I would love to try them. I would love to try to build an E4 team around them. Speaking of, somebody who's a, a, a run and champion themselves, a KTZ, they've been streaming a lot of, I don't know exactly what it is, but I've been lurking in their channel. It's been like a E4, or they pick Pokemon randomly, like they random number generator, like 20 Pokemon or something, and then try to build an E4 team around it. I haven't been like watching super intently, but it's a really cool concept. I would love to try that, and I would love to throw some mythicals in there because that would be really fun. These are not used ever. They're really funny though. Do me a favor and look up their move sets. This is never used, and Togekiss is really solid. Um, Togekiss is like probably somewhere in lower A tier. Pretty solid Pokemon. Like it's a really good typing. It's a pretty decent substitute for like other fairy types. And that's everything apparently. That's that's the tier list. Zooming out makes it so impossible to read. Again. A lot of this is my opinion through my experiences and through like watching other people's experiences with the game. So I'm sure that other people feel a little bit differently about this than I do. I do think I have like a decent amount of experience with the game. I mean, I put hundreds of attempts into it and I, I did end up beating it. So I like to think that I have a decent understanding of the game. Thank you everybody for watching. If you liked this kind of tier list video, I think it'd be cool to do more tier lists about like whatever it may be. Like I think doing like a, a tier list on best ROM hacks or something would be a cool idea. But if you like this video, be sure to like, 
comment. I, I definitely gave you a little, a bunch of opportunities to drop a comment on your own random own opinions and all that. But yeah, anything in the not used tier, let me know if you've used it or if you've liked it or hated it or whatever it may be. But yeah, thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate it. And then I'll see you guys at the end of the month for the run and bun winning attempt video. All right, peace.